Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I am having a little break from collection videos. I'm around halfway through my deck collection anyway, and really the amount of videos has been because of the way that I have wanted to categorise and group the decks. Doing them in categories has meant many more videos because then the categories have become more challenging over time when you get left with things to group together. I'm sure there'll be a misc incoming. <laughs> that being said, I have been enjoying varying discussions about decks and the tarot world and being here on whatever media we're on. And I thought that I would come on and share some of my deck collection reflections. It was quite early into a video to get interrupted it's pretty impressive but it was a good interruption and I'm back a couple of hours later <laughs> but I am back and what I was saying was going through the process of the deck collection I knew and had the intention of coming and reflecting on it after anyway I reflect on my experience with my collection and just stuff in general that's a, always an ongoing reflection I'm not one who tends to move it into depth years or anything like that just because I feel like I've had an ongoing process that fits well enough with that over my life span however I've been like I said listening to a lot of conversations and all of the different variations and stances and feelings about it lately it's one of those topics that comes in and about in its various forms uh, and sort of gains popularity in discussion so I've listened to more lately and because I had broken my deck collection videos down into a million videos instead of just doing them simply I have already fully formed what I feel is my reflection this particular time around so this is my reflections of I suppose my deck collection and curation and also some sentiments about my feelings around these discussions around the community and the trends uh, just just a few th thoughts that are hopefully coherent and fully formed enough to share but certainly are not meant to be speaking for anyone else other than myself. And I figured, by the way, which I should probably start actually doing, I figured I would just flick through a, a deck, which I've seen a few people do whilst they're talking, people who aren't necessarily ones who show their face, which I don't on here. I do on Patreon, I do on Instagram, just not on YouTube, but <laughs> it gives you something to look at if you're going to watch the video. It's called the Hide Tarot, and the reason that I chose it is because it's not a very well-known deck. In my understanding I'm not over you on YouTube as much as everywhere else but I figured you might like to to see this deck it's an interesting tarot it's very symbology and archetypal based I really love it it's and the mixed media is great and it blends really well together because it has this monochrome vibe going the whole way through which really pulls them together so that's what I'm going to do but I'm going to talk about what I was talking about <laughs> so when I was thinking about sharing my reflections and then I saw a lot of videos and discussions coming out about deck collections decluttering bringing stuff in depth years all of that good stuff I decided to make a few notes about my feelings in general as well as what had come up for me during recording the deck collection videos so far and that's kind of what I wanted to get into and I did for a moment sort of toy with whether to share my observations of my collection here on YouTube and the reason being is my my reservation is that as people we generally will choose to hear what we want based on our own agenda perspective experience whatever you know that's that's kind of what we do in life often 
but I feel like we have more capacity to be open and active uh, in our listening and see something from from someone else's point of view when it's a conversation that's that that has more back and forth you know it's discussional not like the youtube videos where they kind of act like this still moment in time where it feels like a a statement or a sentiment is shared and then we kind of just watch it and and you know form a judgment it's not the same to me as relating in person so a part of me can't help but feel that it doesn't matter what i say about my collection or my experience with it because i kind of assume that the majority of feelings thoughts and responses are going to be not be based on just my views it will be more to do with if the individual shares these or not. So rather than hearing how they make sense in my world, they'll come from if that makes sense in their world, which again, I don't think is new. That's not a wild theory. Um, I'm not above or excluded from this either. I love this card. <laughs> uh, that's how humans work. That's certainly how the internet works. You know, book reviews, deck reviews, just ingesting anything on a less relational basis. And also for me, when we're following someone, and this has been discussed before, you know, we're a viewer. So it's a viewer relationship, which is entirely different to a friendship. And when we're on the internet, sometimes sharing our opinions we don't always make it clear that there are opinions or sometimes people think that their opinion should be other people's opinions <laughs> pick your poison <laughs> uh, so one of the things that I've I've sort of come to is that we benefit from not giving people on the internet permanent vacancies in our brain and my hope and certainly my hope for when people watch me but also when I watch others is to be able to listen to a video knowing it may challenge our thoughts or inspire us or I might disagree, agree, a mixture all the while being reflective but true to our experience and our needs like that's the the sweet spot for me when we treat people's opinions like it's the law or the right way or somehow it holds more meaning over our own, our autonomy is just lost. And this is not going to be popular, but the reality is for me that it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about our practice collection, whether we're a deep reader or not, if we can go deep with our decks or how many of them we can go deep with because the, the discussion of depth is a thing. Um, uh, if we're judged by what parts of ourselves we do and don't show here, we all give it meaning, which is fine until it's at the detriment of ours or someone else's well-being. So it's if we're not sharing our opinion to join in, um, but we're doing this to change someone else's or on the other hand, if we feel a need to sort of defend ourselves, fight back, justify our stance, they are not really the type of videos that I want to create. By the way, I'm not saying that relationships aren't important to humans, including this kind. Uh, the internet spaces don't always foster this in the same way in my experience, unless they're those people who we genuinely sort of voice message video chat with connect with away from the moments when we're like creating content or we're being consumed for entertainment like not those times because those are like watching from afar and having a genuine connection again feels very different so being a viewer isn't the same as being a friend or an acquaintance you know there's those layers um that being said i will share my reflections rather than carrying on rattling about <laughs> uh 
about this, but I just wanted to share where I was uh, with kind of those discussions. I enjoy those discussions. I don't enjoy when they're put forward as the only way, which sometimes isn't even intentional, but sometimes it fully is. And I've never enjoyed that about online or, or just it happens in real life, right? <laughs> if people tell you what you should think, it's uh, it's not the most fun thing in the world. I am going to share my faults for people to hear and and do with whatever they please because I have genuinely got no attachment to it, not in the way that I used to. I actually found YouTube was really hard for me in that sense, if I'm honest, and all social media invites this. It's, we choose a favourite, right? <laughs> for whatever reason, Instagram hasn't felt that, that same type of challenging with me and has felt more connective and more conversational um and that's just my experience but i did used to care about certain things and sort of lose my own voice in youtube so i wanted to make sure that i wasn't in that space when i came back because i really enjoy hearing people's opinions and feelings when they're not aligned with my own uh, as well as when they do like I feel like we serve ourselves and each other better when we own these though you know like it's okay to disagree but it's about owning that disagreement not telling someone else they're just out and out wrong uh, <laughs> I mean you can it's just not gonna go down well but like our opinion is not law it's not gospel it's not anyone else's I've built a very different relationship with this over time and as the kind of discussions have come out about depth year and decluttering and consumerism and minimalism and maximalism and just all of that stuff I've found myself really aware of the aspect of extremes that were sometimes it felt like celebrated over the varying many many grey areas and middle paths that exist in between those and I think that that's why I took a step back and another reason that I was a little bit hesitant at first to discuss uh, until I was sort of sure what I wanted to share uh, the the fluctuations and celebrating doing it differently at the same time and still being a part of the the one community is the way that I enjoy seeing it and it happens but there are also segregational aspects where it's f almost feels like people have to fit in those extremes and that's always a moment of pause for me but back to collection and reflections before this video goes on for an eternity or I run out of deck <laughs> 90% of the time now I feel really peaceful with my collection as a whole. I feel like it has a really good ebb and flow. I was brought up with very little, um, of which I won't go into, but um, that's an aspect. And also I was always encouraged to spring clean regularly, not just in spring. <laughs> but I also noticed that when I'm feeling shitty and my mental well-being is taking a hit, that's when one of the times anyway that that 10 percent of doubt or dis-ease with my collection or my hobbies just general this isn't just specific to tarot either but that's when it comes in and i, I sort of feel like that's natural you know 90 percent comfort is is a good space to be but that 10 percent is when i'm enticed into comparison or more of like a purge state which I find is quite a quick hit for me. So in the same way that for some, buying lots of things can be a quick hit. Um, and, and of course, you know, buying stuff, I'm not going to say I don't feel good, but I'm more of a, my, my thing is more of a purge state. Um, so I tend to, you know, favour that. But it, but it has an extreme beneath it for me. So that's my kind of my my difficult 10%, as I say. Uh, what an interesting card for death. I haven't worked with this deck enough to know every single card intimately yet. 
but I do really enjoy this deck. This deck is like an archetypal legend. <laughs> But this one always gives me a moment of pause. I should spend more time with it. It gives me Doctor Who vibes and the angels. And if anyone knows where I'm going with that, then then let me know. But yeah. Uh, but back to decks. What I've realised about how many decks I own is that this is very specific to where I am in my life and certain events. So what's comfortable, fun, you know, serves me for now, wouldn't have at other points. In this instance, when I was physically healthier and more able, back when I worked full time, um, and I had only one uh, lifelong disease and chronic, chronic pain which fluctuated, I had other hobbies which created less time for tarot and, and my craft. Um, my ability to split time and just have time to engage with these things was far less. So I owned less, I wanted for less, and I just genuinely didn't have time for more. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't reviewing things, I wasn't dedicating time to a tarot beers, I wasn't looking for artwork to enjoy and brighten my day indoors, I wasn't looking for stuff for the myriad of other reasons that I now enjoy having more than I previously had. But since losing my ability to do so much, and again, I don't want to go into depth with this because one, those who know me well enough will know. Two, it, it's not really necessary because I don't want it to be mistaken as an excuse or a distraction. It's, it's just my truth and you know since those things changed and my life changed a lot uh, specifically what I'm able to do or rather unable to do and how much time I'm indoors and not being able to work how I used to my collection has expanded I do have a lovely flow in and out um while numbers aren't massively important to me, I do have like a gentle maximum because I find that that makes sense for me at the moment still. It's just a, it's a comfort, like safety net more than anything. Um, I don't really need it, but <laughs> it's, it's still something I've put on myself anyway. And one thing that I have said about my collection as well, which I've said before, but this super stands true, between review offers, which I only accept if I'm interested, of course, but that and the many generous friends that I have in this community over the years, I've been showered in some beautiful offerings and that has almost, if not exactly, doubled the size of what I own and I shit you not. Um, and I don't feel obligated to keep them, I can assure you. And I know that that's difficult for some people, but I don't. If anyone gives me a gift, they will know this right off the bat. My friends will attest to this. Uh, but people generally know me well. And I, as I say, only tend to review things that I feel I'm, I either was interested in already or I feel like I'd be quite called cool to. So it's definitely had an impact on my collection, right? Because there's no way that I would have spent as much money as it would cost to own everything that I have. No way. It's not part of my personal budget, especially now because my circumstances financially are very different. But I just, I just wouldn't have any way, if I'm honest. But the funny thing now is I have far less money but far more time um time of which i can't work traditionally but time which needs filling to distract from pain or just just other unfun crap um and to be honest if there was a miracle cure which is impossible but just for argument's sake and and for another view of this to sort of explain where i am if that happened, I, it would surely lead to me parting with more of my collection, not because I don't like them or don't work with them, but because I have other ways of which I would want to split my time again, you know, 
that I enjoyed that I miss but as it is my collection is it, it represents quite a lot of stuff quite a lot more than it used to it's a hobby it's an extension of my therapeutic interests I do a lot of self-development and uh, psychological and therapeutic things with with my tarot because of my career um, it's also an art collection to me it is a distraction it's a play tool it's part of my craft i use it in ritual it's an aspect of my small beers and and probably more stuff that i'm forgetting um i'm going to show you the back i have run out of cards so i'm just going to wrap this up but <laughs> oh there's one more but as i say it holds more positions now than ever before because of my circumstances desires needs decisions and i've realized it also has categories now uh, what i mean by that is the decks in my collection can be categorized into different areas than they all used to just be under the one so i can go deep as some people like to say with many more decks than i ever could before because of time but i still can't nor want to with every single one i own like i just don't i do use them uh, a collection for me is still a curation so if something isn't used for too long or i feel like it's had its time with me i'm not into it anymore for whatever reason whatever comes up a personal rule that works for me is passing them on whether that is you know selling trading gifting uh but how i use them from each other may differ so i have like my foundational decks which are my homies my deep divers uh there's so many terms that people use for them some people like the term soul connection some people don't you know whatever <laughs> They're my foundation decks, my deep divers, my core decks. Then I have an extended selection of decks which fall under more play, artistic enjoyment, cathartic activities, and the other creative ways that I use tarot that don't necessarily or always centre around work with tarot in a, a deeper emotional, psychological or soulful realm but they still have their uses and ways that they show up in my practice. So yeah, that's where I'm at. As I've been filming these, I did grab a few since and a few prior to when they would have been put in their collections that now won't be included. And I've decided to part with them. But honestly, that was less to do with this process. I like to gently comb through my decks on average, let's say every three to six months. Uh, and again, gifting, trading, selling, whatever suits at the time. And that's what it is. When it doesn't fit into my needs and joy, a part of my developmental practice, a support tool or part of my biz, it, when it's not serving one of those, it's, it's time to go. And I'm okay with that. I don't personally, whilst I do have some that I love for their artwork, aside from my Pokemon deck, which just hurts my hands like no one's business, but I fucking love Pokemon. <laughs> that is a collector's item through and through. Other than that, uh, for me, it, I don't want them just for their art if it's not going to at least do one of those. Uh, it could be dream work, you know, it could be anything, but... If it doesn't or our circumstances change, then, you know, they go. I buy very little nowadays and I am far fussier. But I think the fussiness happens and I don't feel like I'm alone here. So let me know. But for me, it was the more aware I got of what works for me. But also I've got what I like already. So it's, it's harder to sort of feel that desire when it's already being fulfilled and and like i said financially i can't afford to be buying them often anyway but that's not a massive problem because it's getting decks is a super luxury as far as i'm concerned uh but there's no real fixed rule is what i'm saying i have a gentle natural agreement with myself and if circumstances change then that will change over time 
But they are my reflections. I hope that you enjoyed looking through the high tarot as well. Just a few musings and observations about how this comes up in our community as well as here. I think I have about six or seven more video collections to do. I, I really wish I'd done the categories different. As always, I've mildly overcomplicated it for myself, but who knows? I'm, I'm missing doing VRs, uh, but I don't really want to bail on my collection halfway through because it's I enjoy doing the videos because for me they're like mini reviews so if you're wondering how I show my collection usually one deck is no more than three minutes and they're, they're like very concise reviews of my experience or use or draw to the deck so they do have their purpose they don't seem sort of empty to me but I'm finding myself wishing I'd done it a little bit more together uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts about what I've said, how this works for you. Like I said, no matter what they are, there's variation between us all. That's what makes us so interesting and diverse. I don't want a comment section of yes people, unless you're genuinely, that's your experience, <laughs> of course. But yeah, thanks for hanging out with me while I ramble, which this definitely has been. I appreciate there wasn't really much to watch per se, but I will be back with collection videos and then move on to some fun VRs as well. So thank you and I will catch you all again soon.